My name is Marvin Sanzilla. Let's take a journey from the Nani Desert Coast, one of the driest places on Earth, to Etosha and on to the Caprivi at the heart of Southern Africa. Sandwich Harbor, the Etosha Pan, the Kavango River, the Kwando, the Zambezi, these places sound like a poem, each one far from the other, each one unique, but they have one thing in common. They are home to some of the richest and most important natural habitats left on Earth. As the whole world is being transformed into mining, cities and agriculture, Namibia's last wilderness areas have become much more important than ever before. This is the story of how we have become world leaders in ecotourism, winning international awards for our pioneering approach, marine development and conservation, all centered around these beautiful Namibian wetlands. Go with the flow. Namibia is famous around the world for its endless desert landscapes of space and solitude. Nestled within this arid landscape are unexpected oases, wetland sanctuaries, rich ecosystems that support vast herds of game and flocks of birds. When combined with Namibia's rich local cultures, these wetlands are now becoming the new tourist attractions. The game is coming back in the area. Caprivi is reclaiming itself at the wildlife sanctuary. It's, it's an unspoiled natural environment, especially Caprivi. Today we can say we have a lodge in one of the best wetlands in the world. To look right into the eyes of a lion is just amazing and I, I don't think there are many places around the world you can uh, have this like I had it in Itosha National Park. This is an ageless land because it's got untold wonders. As a destination for ecotourists, I, I don't know that there's anything better than Namibia. So what exactly do we mean when we talk about wetlands? Wetlands are areas where there's either permanent or temporary surface water, where water dominates the landscape and where water controls the entire ecosystem. 
Almost 5% of Namibia's surface area consists of wetlands, although most of these are dry much of the year. In years of exceptional rain, the whole country is transformed. For a few months, there are wetlands everywhere. Like a Toshi's famous salt pan, in 2011, turned into a massive lake bigger than some countries. Once a year, Namibia's dry lands become wetlands. Namibia's wetlands are home to some of the most biologically productive ecosystems on the planet. That's why in a country as dry as Namibia, wetlands are a precious resource. They bring the essentials of life, fresh water, food, materials to build our houses, a good standard of living, and as my own family history reveals, our rivers are full of human adventures because these rivers are major highways for people too. That's my grandfather's old homestead. My ancestor Sanzila was born in 1855, about 150 years ago. Sanzila was a great hunter. His name means a person born in the pathway. He migrated south, crossing the Zambezi River from Zambia into Namibia. And right in this area, he established his temporary hunting settlement in the Caprivi region. This whole area used to be highly abundant with wildlife, elephants, lions, hippos, lichwes, and all different types of birds. The floodplains would flow endlessly with plenty of freshwater fish. Nankuntre means all small pieces of land that could not be covered by floodwaters. It's in this area that my ancestors decided to settle. The village gets its name from a tree that my great, great, great grandfather planted. Right behind me, the Isiza tree. Like all other Namibians, all our ancestors decided to settle in places near water. In a country like Namibia, where it's very dry, water is life. And today, we are developing many new ecotourism-friendly businesses around our wetlands. Tourism is one of the fastest growing sectors in our economy growing at an average of 16% a year since 1990. The classic definition of ecotourism is about finding a balance, a balance between conservation of natural areas and community development. No destination has done a better job of finding that balance than Namibia. That mix has created more joint ventures than any other destination globally. Whether you're in the Caprivi wetlands or you're stretching to the coastlines, everything in between, including the Atosha Pan, some form of that destination is under protected status because communities have decided they want to protect it and live with wildlife. If you are comparing to the past, most of the people, they could come for hunting, but today, 95% of the tourists coming in want to see living animals, the big, beautiful five. They want to see our wetlands. They want to see our beds, our grasses. Some, they come here to ride a duck canoe, the Mokoro. Some, they want to go for game drives. They want to do boat cruises and a guided walking experience. And this is the future for tourism in Namibia, tapping global tourism trends and developing our unique destination Namibia, all based on our untouched pristine places and in tune with our African lifestyles. Where in the world do people still live with wild animals? Can you imagine an elephant in your own backyard? There is a big bull of an elephant. He must be 30 years of his age. He is enjoying eating reeds. Must be one of his favorite meals. What a wonderful experience to come so close to an elephant. Elephants are the biggest attraction to tourists and we have a big heads of them. We are sharing these animals with Botswana. In the morning, they cross to Namibia, and in the evening, they cross back to Botswana. 
take the crocodile. We are going to visit some of the most important wetlands in Namibia. First, let's take a closer look at the Namibian coast. I don't know how anything survives here. Namibia's coastline is infamous as a place of shipwrecks, sandstorms, pounding waves, and fogs caught between two different worlds. This is the place where the Namibi Desert and its tiring dunes spills over into the icy Atlantic Ocean. This part of the skeleton coast is barren and inhospitable, where nature's elements are too harsh for most living things to survive. This is one place I can rest in peace. Sandwich Harbor is a famous stopover for more than just me. This Ramsar site is a safe haven for migratory birds on their way from Africa to Europe. These lagoons are rich feeding grounds for shoals of fish, seal colonies, whales and dolphins. And what an adventure to get here. The Benguela current flows northwards from the southern ice cap, bringing with it an abundant supply of oceanic nutrients. Invisible creatures, microscopic organisms, and look at all the wildlife that lives off these invisible nutrients in Namibia's ocean. These plankton-rich mats support all this life here. This is why tourists come to our coast, to experience all this life based in and around these world-famous wetlands. This is amazing. This is a real Namibian experience. And more than that, this is ecotourism. Riding in a sailboat driven by ocean winds, seals playing around and seagulls catching fish. This is what we mean by ecotourism. Low impact, leaving no traces, a natural, pure Namibian experience. Beautiful. You may not believe this, but right here is where wetlands begin. This thriving cooperation of schedules and technology here in Namport sits right next to this ebb and flow of nature. Because right here is Namport, and over there is tourist companies but most importantly, this is Walvis Bay, Ramsar site, a wetland of international importance. 
Here we are on a doorstep of a major international harbor and many vessels from all over the world. This is the marriage of heavy industry and ecotourism in a modern day Namibian society and a very successful story. With the addition of Dorab National Park, Namibia's coastline is now the biggest continuous protected area in Africa. Namibia has given birth to a new super pack, the fourth largest in the world. We are moving to Etosha, one of the most famous wetlands in Namibia. There is no place like this in the world. This is the Kuvalai, a huge inland delta flowing from the high mountains of Angola, 500 kilometers southwards into the spectacular Etosha Pan. This huge Kuvalai delta system supports almost half of Namibia's entire human population. The Oshana region gets its name from the seasonal rivers that flow through here to the Etosha Pan. These Oshanas bring the Efunja, the floods that are the lifeblood of this land. Here I am in the heart of the Oshana region, at the end of the dry season. But in some years, like 2011, this Kubelai is transformed by floods. This flood is really the worst of its kind. Starting from Okabango, Kaprivi, Wangwena, Shikoto, Musati, and Oshana region. Although a national disaster, this is the very thing that also sustains us. And history has shown us that this rough road brings out the best in us. Over thousands of years, cycles of wet and dry seasons produce pockets of water just below these grounds. As you can see here, I'm surrounded by hand-dug wells. And these wells were dug over 100 years ago. Although people still today have access to tap water and water pipelines, those people living far and remote from town still so much depend on these wells to just tap this life-giving source of water. Water flowing down the Kuvalai system also brought with it these fertile soils and a high water table that supports crops, fruit trees and seasonal inundations of fish. Here I am at one of the many local fishing camps right in the Kuvalai Delta. During drier seasons, local fishermen travel for hundreds of kilometers to establish temporary settlements here. Fish is caught here for either consumption and business. This is why most of us today live near wetlands, because water controls everything we do. This is why we call the Kuvalai Delta the lifeblood of the nation. It's simply because the Kuvalai Delta supports so much life here. These traditional lifestyles across these cultural landscapes perhaps one day will become potential for tourism. This is an incredible ecosystem a huge wetland that flows into Etosha National Park. There are even a few permanent pans north of Etosha in the Oshana region. Floodwaters flowing from the mountains of Angola into Namibia is usually fresh water. Now during dry seasons, these salt pans dry up and all you get is nothing but pure salt. There is something unique and so strange about this place and there is nowhere else you will find it in the world. Just take a listen.
all you hear is nothing. Absolutely nothing. This is incredible. We just spotted a lion over there. A tosha will always be the classic African safari experience combined with its landscapes and its beautiful heads of wildlife. Incredible. Over 200,000 tourists from all around the world come to see this remarkable sight. Thousands and thousands of flamingos ride the rain from their homes in Wildest Bay to the Etoshi Pan. Water here is the kickstart mechanism of life. From Etoshi, I'm heading to the Okavango, one of the most famous rivers in the world. For most of the way along its course, the Kavango River is a single channel. When it crosses from Angola into Namibia, it transforms into a wide braided system with untouched islands. Within a very short stretch of river, before moving into Botswana, is a concentration of interesting habitats for wildlife. There's an old mission in Andara, which is today a mission hospital. Another way to get in touch with the history and culture of the Kavango River is to go on foot. These are the living museum excursions of the Kwesan. Tourists can experience their tracking skills firsthand to monitor wildlife numbers and movements in the parks. It's, it's poor, and this is there for a young elephant. Mm -hmm. The old man is trying to work with us in the in the game count and to teach us about the animal tracks so that we can make a tourism project. So uh, on our game count, we are also using a GPS. So we can take the tourists, then we can walk with them as a bush walk, then we can also try to show them and also tell them the knowledge which we are getting from the old men. Okay. We can take this information also pass to the rest of the young generations so we can still keep in touch with our tradition while we are also doing the modern life. We believe that fire is from us, so this is how we started fire in our own culture. So we can show the tourists how we make fire. Very busy. What is the meat pot? <laughs> 20,000 tourists visit these wetlands every year.
Also das absolute Highlight war heute die Löwen mit den zwei Babys. This area is a thriving and well-established tourism hub. The idea is for Namibia and our neighbors to benefit more from tourists on their Southern African adventure. Like all perennial rivers, Namibia shares the Kavango River with Angola and Botswana. A shared river means shared resources and shared responsibility. We often see water flowing down the Kavango River and we are thinking we're losing a valuable resource. This water flows through our country, but we don't own it. Botswana's famous Okavango Delta is dependent on this huge volume of water flowing right behind me, carrying nutrients from upstream into the barren Kalahari Desert. If we make any changes to our stretch of the river, we will directly impact their wetland and ecotourism industry. Just as if Angola decided to build a dam capturing this water, that will affect us the same way. We have a plan to properly manage the Kavango River for future generations. We work closely with our neighbors, Angola and Botswana, to decide the best way to preserve this river and promote sustainable incomes from ecotourism. Like the Kavango River, the Kwando is one of the cleanest rivers in Namibia with an abundance of wildlife. In exceptional years of heavy rainfall like this one, the Kwando and Zambezi River are interlinked, joining up to form this huge wetland. When the massive amounts of water flooded this whole area, making this sea behind me, regenerating the fishing industry and attracting the large amounts of people to these prized resources. Yeah, because we have come in to see what happened to one I me. It took a hand, no, I'm not even one now. When I'm sure, when I'm going to one side. I've heard about Lake Liambezi being a very, very fertile and very productive area. Go no, how to be now, come at 2000, to be a good man, Katu Mo, Katu Mo, to be my, you are young, which one I became a Hana, Limuli Nakuna. Yeah. When inundated with water, nutrients are released from the soil. The Caprivi blooms into this incredible paradise. As Namibians, we always want it to be wet, but this is not what this wetland system wants or gives us. Lucky for us. Much like a Tosha pan, this cycle of wet and dry ensures the biological health of the wetland system. The Caprivi supports 60% of Namibia's elephant and buffalo populations. Tourists come to experience wildlife like this in their natural habitat. This type of tourism is good for local people because they benefit directly. Local people share these waters with the very same wild animals that tourists love to see. Our animals appreciate to live in Namibia where they can still roam freely and still have that free spirit as we are one of the few countries that actually still has our uh, cheetah population growing, elephants population growing uh, and our conservation story is in fact an unknown story and I think Namibians need to celebrate. This is what Namibia has to offer. Here we are in Caprivi region at the Bashara Cultural Festival. Bashara meaning we are flowing with the water. 
like all other regions in Namibia, today in Caprivi, we are celebrating our cultural heritage and achievements. We can be proud of the marriage of conservation, rural development, and the potential that ecotourism brings within our communities. It's great to be taken away by this incredible celebration of our culture. We are flowing with the water. Caprivi is at the heart of a vast wilderness area in the center of southern Africa. Caprivi, the piece that fits the jigsaw together. The Caprivi wetland connects five countries into one international conservation and tourism hub. This idea takes me back to the story of my ancestors, how in the 1800s the great Sanzila migrated south from Zambia into Namibia, how today all these wetlands link us together. Each wetland is important for different reasons. In terms of their value, their contribution to the nation and their potential, Namibia's wetlands are among the world's most valuable and remote natural habitats. Their future, if managed wisely, will sustain us and our good neighbors. If used wisely and sparingly, these waterways will be utilized for many generations to come. <laughs> 